At Winston Churchill's request in the summer of 1942, President Franklin Roosevelt ordered a squadron of six newly constructed Gato-class submarines to operate from Scotland to assist Great Britain in the battles against enemy shipping and U-boats. The larger American boats, with a top speed of 20 knots and an 11,000 nautical mile range, would allow smaller British submarines to transfer to the Mediterranean Sea, where they were more effective. One by one, as they were launched, submarines Herring, SS-233, Barb, SS-220, Shad, SS-235, Blackfish, SS-221, Gunnel, SS-253, and Gurnard, SS-254, gathered at the submarine base in Groton, Connecticut, for preparation for wartime operations. Just prior to their planned departure, the six submarines, now designated as Squadron 50, were assigned to assist in Operation Torch, the Allied invasion of Vichy-controlled French North Africa, to take place on November 8, 1942. Early on October 19th, the boats departed Groton in advance of the 100-ship American task force led by Rear Admiral Henry Hewitt, which was to land nearly 35,000 troops and 250 tanks under Major General George Patton on the Atlantic coast of French Morocco. For four days prior to the landing, the submarines conducted reconnaissance patrols, gathering information on surf, currents, visibility, minefields, and navigational aids, and furnished the approaching fleet with critical weather information. USS Barb even put a team of U.S. Army scouts and raiders ashore in advance of the main landings at Safi. On the day of the invasion, the submarines equipped with special infrared lights acted as floating beacons to guide the transports through the early morning darkness to the proper landing sites. These operations were difficult and potentially dangerous for the submarines involved. The seas were high, communications were confused, and the approaches were congested with Allied landing craft and warships as well as enemy submarines. In the ensuing confusion, Allied aircraft mistakenly strafed and bombed USS Gunnel, while USS Shad was depth-charged by an Allied destroyer. Once landing operations were underway, the submarines retired to the open sea, where USS Herring sank the Vichy French freighter Via de Havre, departing Casablanca Harbor. At the close of Operation Torch, the submarines headed for their new base in Roseneath, Scotland. After a short refit, they began making patrols north of Spain in the Bay of Biscay, in search of blockade runners attempting to run war supplies out of neutral Spanish ports. Patrols in European waters would prove to be frustrating for the submarine commanders. Allied and neutral shipping crossed the same shipping lanes as the enemy, making selecting targets difficult. The British Admiralty required that all ships over 5,000 tons be reported by radio and permission obtained before attacking. U.S. skippers were also warned that Allied bombers could target them if they were caught on the surface necessitating almost exclusively submerged operations, putting extra strain on the crews. Despite the odds against them, U.S. submarines found ways to damage German war efforts. On February 19, 1943, USS Blackfish battled two German anti-submarine vessels disguised as trawlers and succeeded in sinking the patrol boat Haltenbank for the first confirmed sinking for a scorecard. One month later, USS Herring encountered and was credited with likely sinking a German U-boat enabling the crew to add a second German emblem to their battle flag. The most successful of the American submarines was USS Shad, which made four attacks, dispatching a German ore barge in a blazing deck gun attack, sinking a trawler, and damaging a 1,200-ton destroyer escort. In April 1943, Squadron 50 patrol areas shifted north to positions off Norway and Iceland to intercept German warships, including the battleship Tirpitz, should they attempt to break out into the Atlantic. They shifted once again in May to the Mid-Atlantic for anti-U-boat operations. By summer, however, surface hunter-killer groups were turning the tide against the U-boats, and it was obvious that American submarines were not being used to the best advantage due to a lack of targets. The boats of Squadron 50 were withdrawn from European waters and sent to the Pacific, where greater glory awaited them. None more so than USS Barb, which will be the subject of an upcoming post in our Looking Back 75 Years series.